Hello. So welcome to uh, our chapter five. This section we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to be talking about capital assets and capital projects. So when a government or nonprofit builds a building, uh, when they uh, maybe buy equipment, uh, they may also acquire some intangible assets. Those type of things. Uh, even land. We're going to talk about a little bit about land today. So as we go through this presentation, remember to get the code down as you go, and um, we will uh, continue here. So here, here we are, Chapter 5, Learn the Objective, Describe the Nature and Characteristics of General Capital Assets. Uh, most of you probably know basically what a capital asset is, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, account for general capital assets including acquisition, maintenance, depreciation, impairment, and disposition. So we'll talk about all those things. Uh, and we'll also explain the purpose and characteristics uh, typical financing sources of capital projects. Um, we'll, we'll talk some, we'll, we'll go through a bunch of journal entries. We have uh, some illustrative transactions, right, for capital projects funds that we'll talk about and how they affect the financial statements. Okay, so here's the the list of capital projects, right? So we have uh, our um, capital assets, which may include land buildings, uh, land and building improvements. So things like parking lots or, or maybe, uh, um, you know, any of those like, uh, landscaping, any of those things that might improve on a, a building or land. And uh, construction work in progress, this is uh, an account that we'll be using um, and talking about. Okay, so construction work in progress. And vehicles, machinery, um, there even we even have uh, especially with governments and nonprofits we have works of art and historical treasures um, and also uh, intangible assets okay so a lot of times when we are purchasing or building these type of assets uh, there is debt that's incurred right so we borrow we issue bonds we borrow money to attain these assets or build them And then those uh, debts are paid off. So this this um, introduces two new types of funds, right? So one is our uh, capital projects fund. The other is our debt service fund. Okay, so we these capital projects or uh, capital projects funds are made to, uh, typically to uh, create the capitals assets. The debt service is to then pay off the debt that's incurred from creating debt capital assets. Okay. And other things. Debt service can also be for other things as well, but a lot of times it's for capital assets. Okay. So um, our general fund or our special revenue funds, so what they're used for when we talk about uh, general capital assets is they account for the capital outlay for expenditures from the budget, right? So our general fund or special revenue fund, this is the fund that we budget for, right? So we're going to have appropriations. And so when we actually go out and a buy right something that we budgeted for related to a capital asset then that is uh, where the appropriations uh, are a whole process right appropriations uh, followed by our uh, purchase orders which is our commitment to buy our encumbrance right appropriations encumbrance expenditures is our liability and then our actual uh, payment so capital projects fund is a new fund, right? This one here is just, we're setting this up for construction of major capital uh, expenditures. This is just during the construction process. That's the only time they exist. And then of course the government wide uh, governmental activities 
since we're doing the dual approach, right? We're we're going to account for cost and depreciation. So they, this is capitalizable, right? So we hold on to these for many, many years. And the government-wide governmental activities is where this uh, holding, uh, holding an asset occurs. We don't hold assets necessarily on the general fund side and depreciate them. We don't do that. There's no depreciation cost on the general fund side. Okay, so uh, how do we record this uh, capital asset? Okay, the three ways. We do it at historical cost, uh, estimated cost, or fair value. It depends on what type of asset it is uh, and if a fair value can be. Typically, a fair value is going to be uh, something like if you were to sell it on the open market, what would it be worth? Uh, estimated cost, a lot of times this is done by uh, maybe professional appraisers. And then our historical cost is something like, right, like what did we build the building for initially, right? So the, a lot of times this is for capital projects that were built and we know the cost incurred to build to build the asset. So our uh, expenditure happens in the government fund, right? These were budgeted for. In the governmental fund. They're capitalized in the governmental activity. Capitalized means they're held and depreciated, right? Depreciation expense happens in the governmental activities as well. So when we have capital assets as a government or nonprofit, right? So these are some things that we need to, that were required to disclose about our capital assets. So uh, we e even if they're depreciated or not, we still need to disclose them, right? We need to we need to list them out. Um, we need to have a policy for capitalizing assets. Which assets? Where does how um, big of an asset, right? Something that's worth five thousand dollars, maybe that's capitalizable. Something that's worth two thousand, something that's worth maybe fifty thousand. You got to kind of set your policy of where you capitalize, okay, and what types of assets are capitalized. Uh, we also have to show the differences between um, asset amounts, right? So beginning of year, end of year balances. Um, Anything acquired during a, a single year, right? So we need to find the differences. Anything acquired or sold. And then, of course, the de depreciation and how it's calculated. Along with, if there's any special uh, assets, like, for example, art or, or historical treasures, uh, we, need, we need those described, right? Those are going to be unique ones, unique assets that we need to uh, list and describe separately on the disclosure. Okay, so one type of asset is going to be land, right? So land is not depreciable. So the main trick with land is, is we have to say, okay, uh, what value are we, are we going to give it when we put it onto our uh, records, right, our accounting records? So it depends on how you get it, right? So this is how you get the asset right here. So if we purchase the asset, it's going to be our, the contract price and all related costs. If it's a forfeiture, right, so we uh, get it off of tax liens, right, so somebody couldn't pay the taxes on it or they forfeit it to the government, right, because people owe property taxes and whatnot to the government. If it's a forfeiture, people lose it to, to the government, then we have to add up all the taxes and liens and other claims, okay, uh, surrendered, plus all other costs uh, incidental in acquiring the ownership and perfecting the title, right? So for the government to own it, uh, which that's that's another question all in and of itself, should government actually own property uh, and how much of it? But anyways, if, if the government does own it, has the title to it, then um, 
maybe there was a lot of lawyers involved as well, right? So that's part of the cost. Okay, so then the next here is donation, right? Somebody just gives us the land. Uh, nonprofits that happen to quite a bit. Uh, governments maybe sometimes, right? Um, so w w in this case, we're appraising it. So we get a uh, professional appraiser to come in and give us a value at the date. Okay. Now we're shifting gears. So that was land. Now we're talking about buildings and other uh, improvements. So these are depreciated. Land is not. But these are depreciated, except for land. We're not going to do land, right? So if we have a bundle purchase of land and buildings, we have to separate those. Um, and then we're going to depreciate the buildings and the improvements. Um, okay. So the buildings and and other and improvements on the buildings, right, are going to be the same thing. It depends on how we get them. If we purchase them, it's going to be the contract price and related costs. Construction, so we can build our own buildings, right? If we use outside contractors, then it'll be the contract cost, uh, price and related costs, which is pretty easy. If we build it ourselves, then it's a little bit different. So we got to get all direct and indirect expenditures. So we've we've got to set up, and that's one reason why we set up this capital uh, projects funds when we're building uh, buildings. Is we need to track all the costs so we know what to capitalize, right? And we know that we're within budget for uh, for another thing, right? So this this uh, section right here is exactly why right here why we set up the capital projects funds. And then, of course, if it's donated, uh, we've got um, we got the appraised value again. Donations are appraised. Okay. So now, now we're moving on to another type of asset. This is machinery and equipment. These are just generally purchased, right? So they they have a budget. Right, we we budget things in, and we just buy them. Okay. So sometimes, though, depending on exactly what what it is, what's the nature of the machinery and equipment, sometimes there is some construction, or we buy it, we build it ourselves. And so, if depending on how we do this, how we acquire it, we use the same rules as in buildings, right? So if we buy it, we're flipping back here, right? If we purchase it, then it's a contract price and related cost. If we build the equipment ourselves, then it depends on how we build it. Is it our, do we do it ourselves or do we use contractors? And then also, um, what if it's donated to us, right? So we could have maybe like a tractor to mow the lawns here at the college donated to us. And we we would go have it appraised. And then in the end, the, one of the important parts here is it is depreciated. Those are depreciable. Depending on our policy, maybe, right? So we got to know what is capitalizable. Uh, most uh, equipment, like a large tractor, for example, would definitely be a capital asset under for most organizations. Okay, so, so this is a new kind of an, an account, right? So we look back. Uh, if, you, if you've ever done, like, cost accounting or managerial accounting, there's this uh, concept called work in process, right? Where you start uh, constructing um, some products or whatever. In this case, it's a capital project or a product. And uh, you're not done with it. So you have this account that tracks the value of, of your capital project. It's a work in process, right? Capital uh, construction work in process. And so we set this account up. And it's uh, in the governmental activities, okay? Construction work in process. Okay, so we're, we're really accumulating the cost of the construction project. It's, it's uh, reported in the statement of net position, 
which is like the balance sheet, uh, along with other assets, not being depreciated. So this, uh, when it's in process, we do not depreciate yet. Not being depreciated. We don't depreciate it until it's, it's, until it's completed. So now, when the construction is complete, so the asset is reclassified. So we move it, right, from being a uh, asset not being depreciated to now a depreciable asset. And um, we start depreciating it. So what about infrastructure assets? Infrastructure assets are things like like uh, roads, right, sidewalks, drainage systems, um, lighting systems. So things that make the backbone of our cities, our states, right, counties, uh, these are infrastructure assets. So do we depreciate them? Uh, yeah, we do, unless we... Uh, opt it into what's called the modified approach which means we don't need to depreciate things if we use this modified approach otherwise we do so it's kind of the choice of the government they can opt into it or not so this is the modified approach okay so you can you cannot so the modified approach means you do not have to depreciate if two requirements are met and number one uh, is we manage the government manages the equipment because really these two what these two requirements um, are aimed at is even if you're not depreciating an asset what you need to make sure you to do is you need to make sure you're maintaining the asset the infrastructure you need we need to make sure that bridge is safe and it's kept up and doesn't fall in when people drive across it right okay so in order to do that we we set up um, so we make sure we keep our up-to-date inventory list of every all these uh, all these infrastructure projects. We need to make sure we uh, we know the conditions of all of them and their estimated uh, amount to maintain estimated maintenance. Okay, so we need to do that, and then secondly. We need to uh, keep records of condition level established and disclosed. So we need to disclose. So when people look at it and they say, you know, that bridge is kind of looking old. Uh, I want to go to my government and say, how is this bridge, bridge being taken care of? And I can look at it. So that needs the condition of the bridge needs to be uh, disclosed um, and it needs to be uh, upkept, right? Okay, so the so the kind of records that need to be kept, right? So every three years, the condition needs to be assessed and and listed. Um, and also, the three most recent condition is so the three times three, right? So basically, we've got nine years of assessment on record is what's being done here. And so if you if you keep all these records and if you maintain your infrastructure and and uh, provide the, this information, then you don't have to depreciate it. All right. So now we're moving on. So now so those were in uh, infrastructure assets. Now we're talking about intangible assets. So these are uh, these are capital assets that lack physical substance, right? So, for example, if you, as an organization, uh, develop a, a software package, right? You can't necessarily, uh, like, handle a software package. It's like computer code, right? So that, that could be an intangible asset. Um, there's also other, other intangible assets like uh, certain agreements or contracts. Uh, some universities have patents on things, right? Especially if they're research universities, then those kind of pat patents or trademarks definitely are intangible assets. Typically, the intangible assets are not necessarily depreciated. They are, um, we check them for impairment. So as the if the intangible asset if it has a, an, an indefinite life, 
then we check it to see if if it still has a value of what we thought it would did it had last year right every year we go back and check it uh, if it has a, a set life then we can um, uh, what what's called amortize it right okay so so now another kind of asset or or yeah and that is it's lumped in here together with all the assets our lease agreements so these are things that hold value for us right so if we have a certain agreement to, to be able to use a certain asset then um, we can count these agreements as a capital lease so these are all of the uh, meet if they meet any one of the following things in this list then they become a capital asset and basically what that means is you have an agreement to use an as a capital asset uh, under a lease, so a lease agreement to use a capital asset for basically the majority of its life, right? So you're going to use up that capital asset. You have kind of the the corner of the market on that capital asset. Nobody's going to use it. Therefore, it becomes what's called a capital lease agreement. Okay, and the capital lease agreement is one that. Uh, needs to ha can have a fair value and can be shown as an asset an operating lease right is just a, a, a an expenditure of the period okay right like a rental payment expenditure of the period capitalizable lease is is basically an asset okay so cost incurred after acquisition what if what about you know say we get a building right and then we we acquire it or we buy a building or whatever or a piece of equipment and so what about costs that are made after so like let's say for example we have this building and um, we wax the floors is that normal maintenance or is that adding to the utility and function of the capital asset right that's really the trick here utility or function if we enhance that then it, we capitalize that new improvement so waxing the floor may not but let's say for example I put a new roof on or I put a new like HVAC system in it uh, that may be so we're gonna have to actually capitalize and then uh, depreciate that new addition don't have to capitalize and depreciate waxing the floor that's normal maintenance all right so here we go um, so so and this is I'll just kind of go through this real quick when an asset is disposed of the cost of an asset is accumulated is its accumulated depreciation should be removed from the governmental activities general ledger and the gain or losses is disposed so here we so we need to remove right everything about that asset including the accumulated depreciation and we also need to record a gain or a loss okay the gain or a loss is calculated by taking the carrying value which is the uh, which is the asset value minus any depreciation accumulated depreciation okay uh, and then we so the carrying value minus the cash or value that we get for uh, disposal okay so uh, or actually it's, it's the other way around so the cash minus the carrying value that's how it's going to be work. So minus the carrying value, and, and then that'll give us if it's a positive, that gives us a gain. There we go, and if it's a negative, that'll give us a loss. There we go. That's how it how it goes together. Whew, I got we, glad we got that straightened out. Okay, here we go. Uh, asset impairments and insurance recovery. So asset impairment basically is. Uh, somewhere, sometime as we hold an asset, whether it's tangible or intangible, if the value of that asset changes, right, the fair value of the asset changes, then we can adjust the value of the asset on our books as we hold it.
Okay, so significant unexpected decline, right, in service utility of a capital. So we need to write down the asset's carrying value. All right, asset impairments and insurance recoveries. Um, so sometimes when if something happens, right, so this is unexpected, like uh, a building catches on fire or whatever like that, uh, then what, what we can do is um, there's there's different ways to uh, attack this. Sometimes, sometimes we um, have an impairment, right, value. If insurance comes back and covers the impairment, right? We we uh we can have a gain or a loss, right? So here's the impairment, here's the insurance. And so if we if we have more insurance than impairment, then we have a gain. If we have less then we we'll, we could have a loss, right? So that that goes into the mix as well. Depends on what insurance pays into the mix. All right, some some agreements when the governments own assets, sometimes what they'll do is uh, they'll sell the asset to an, a company and then they'll uh, lease it back. Okay, and and so what this is set up. So basically, in general, so the standards require that the transferring government continue reporting the transferred asset as a capital asset. So even though they even though they are selling it to another company and 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 uh, using it, right? So, like, let's say the college is like, "Hey, we're going to sell the gymnasium to another company, and then they're going to lease it back to us." Uh, that's still our asset, right? If we have this ar arrangement where they now own the own it because they're like a property management company or or invest a real estate investment trust, and we're going to be able to use it for the next a hundred years or something like that. Uh, that's still our asset. And that's really the, the regulation on this. The reg is set up so that uh, governments cannot like throw assets off their books and yet still have the benefit of using them. So there's really, uh, they're really seeing through those transactions and saying, you know what, those are really still your assets. Okay, so capital capital projects fund, right? So we're going to set this up when uh, when we start building, uh, creating a new capital project. Uh, and and one of the things is we want to make sure all the revenues and financings are dedicated to the purpose of the capital project. They're only going to exist until the project is complete, right? And then we get rid of them. We don't want to record any debt incurred to finance the project in the capital projects fund. We'll talk about this a little, little late, a little later. But if there's any debt incurred, right, like interest or debt payments or that kind of stuff, that's in until we get done with the projects fund. That's going to be uh, hopefully something that's budgeted and taken care of in the general fund. If not, then the the government uh, body needs to uh, pass a supplemental budget and, and pay for those things because it shouldn't end up in the capital projects fund. Okay, so we're, a lot of times we use encumbrances for this, and we'll do a little uh, illustrative example here to show you how the encumbrances work. Okay, so here here is uh, a government. So let's start off this government and say that this government wants to um, buy, build a fire station. Okay, so it wants to build its fire a fire station, and so as part of building the fire station, it sets up what's called the fire station capital projects fund so here is our capital project fund right okay at the same time or so this first transaction this fifty thousand what it is and this is pretty normal for most uh, 
capital projects is until the main financing comes in sometimes we'll go and we'll purchase or we'll uh, borrow some a smaller amount of money just to get things rolling to do some architecture and some initial uh, planning okay so this here is a loan that's taken out from a bank a local bank so we're getting cash for the loan and we have the short-term notes payable this is really just until the main amount of money comes in to help pay for this project so we get it rolling right and then we also have this these uh, budgeted funds right so we have to budget all this project uh, how much it's going to be right so we we are initially we're expecting it to uh, be about 1.5 million dollars with some additional uh, financing of three hundred thousand dollars so it's going to be about 1.8 million for the entire uh, project we're going to issue and we'll see this later we're going to issue a bond for 1.2 million to help pay for it so so here we go as we start rolling into these encumbrances so we have our appropriation set up right these are our budgeted amounts now we're doing encumbrances and we're starting to commit our budgeted funds and starting to get the project rolling okay so this is uh, these are a bunch of supplies and materials this 443,000 okay supplies materials and labor internally really to get the project going okay this hundred and this one million uh, five thousand right here dollars this is uh, work that we're having a private contractor do to build the fire station so that's encumbered as well and so we're doing POs for all these things. Okay, so now some of these things. Uh, so so we, we have some engineering work done. We didn't encumber this. Uh, we didn't encumber this, but maybe we should have. But anyways, we go ahead and we get the actual invoice from the engineers. And so that's something that we actually just pay for right up to the top. So it didn't necessarily go through our process, and that's something maybe for the management to figure out uh, what kind of stuff needs to go through and what doesn't. So this probably took some special um, authorization and, and approval. And so our capital projects funds, this is for engineering. Okay. Capital project funds uh, shows that expenditure. At the same time, the government activities also show work in process right here. So we're really getting stuff done. As soon as we actually pay for stuff, pay for services or, or products that have been completed, then it shows up into the governmental activities because this is accrual-based accounting, right? Okay, so now... Our fire station projects keeps going. So here are some more uh, expenditures that we are actually going to, we're actually um, got, have invoiced. So they've, they've submitted a bill to us, the contractor did, as part of that one million bucks, right, that we encumbered before. So we go ahead and reverse our encumbrance, okay? and we make our payable so this is our liability so we're saying okay yep there's our, there's our expenditure and this is what we have to pay governmental activities sets up basically the same thing as well but we don't have to reverse encumbrances right okay the three hundred thousand uh, is money that we're getting from other governments so there's maybe like the state or the county or somebody is saying hey you know what we'll help you pay for your fire station and so as part of that we're receiving cash from them okay so this goes into our capital projects fund as well 
So we have our budgeted funds going in here, but then we also have our actual revenues going in there as well. And our government activities also receives the uh, revenues. So now that we got some money coming in, we look back at our architecture stuff going and uh, the main things kind of get the project going. We say, you know what, we need to pay that off. So we go ahead and reduce our payable. We pay it off plus interest, right? So that thousand bucks of interest. So the trick with this, something to think about is we shouldn't have any of our debt, right? No interest should be included when we do capital projects with one exception. And the exception is if it's a business type activity and enterprise, then we can include it in that. If not, then this $1,000 should be paid for out of the general fund. So it shouldn't end up in here. Okay, so that, that'll be a maybe a, a reclassification or something that happens that we pay uh, out of the general fund and not capitalize it. Uh, so so then we have, so here's, we do the same thing. We're paying back our debt here for the governmental activities. Same, basically the same uh, journal entry. And then our bond is issued. Woo, now we got all sorts of money. We got money from our bond. And here's our other financing sources. It goes into the fire, the capital uh, fund. And government activity shows that revenue is uh not not revenue it shows the cash coming in and now we've got a bonds payable because we got to pay it back right on the on the uh, capital project side we don't show it as a payable we just say hey this is money we got something that we do have payable though is stuff we've budgeted for right so we got another uh, bill from the contractor Oh, this is actual payment of a bill from the contractor, right? That one we had before. So we're paying it with cash. And it's in both both funds. It shows them side by side here. Exact same thing. Okay. Then then we then we now have some more encumbrances that we're reversing. Okay. We actually got the bill, so we're reversing. We are recording our expenditures and cash. Paying them out, and we add it to construction work in progress and cash. Okay, now we're doing uh, this is a bill. Uh, for the balance owed to the construction contract, so this is the balance owed to the the uh, contractor. Okay, so we got the bill. We got the last kind of bill from them. So we have a payable. We we record the same thing in our governmental activities, and then we re we record the payment. So here's the payment set up for those payables. Uh, the payable here and the payable here, right? Same thing, it's in two funds. This is side by side. When, the, when, the, when these are presented side by side like this, there really is two transactions. It's not one transaction. But since the same format's used for both, uh, we, we just have one uh, example of the transaction, but it happens in two funds, right? So it's not one transaction. It's actually two, but the same exact a transaction uh, twice, right? One in one fund, one in the other fund. Okay, so now now we're setting up here, uh, and we're saying, okay, uh, all the all the requirements and obligations related to the project are fulfilled, so they're done. Okay, so operate the operating statement accounts are then closed in the capital projects fund. They're, we're closing them to fund balance, restricted. And, and that will be basically, we're kind of like closing them out at the end of the year. Like for our for-profit side of things, we close them all out to capital, 
right? Our equity, our capital and equity. Since we're, we're doing fund accounting, we're going to close it all out to our fund balance, which is restricted because this is restricted only for capital projects, right? So here's closing. We're closing revenue with a debit, right? Normally it's a credit. We're closing it out. We have a balance of our bonds. Uh, the bonds received, we're closing those out. Those were a credit, so now they're being debited. Cons expenditures are now being credited, so we're closing them out. We're, we're basically zeroing out this capital projects fund and getting rid of it all. Expenditures, we're closing that out as well. And our fund balance restricted is where everything's being closed out to. The difference in the balance, I guess you could say, right? Okay. And then in the end here, we're transferring out uh, our um, remaining balance. So if there's any remaining balance in the capital projects funds, the rule is, is this remaining balance should be used then. So we didn't use it to build the building, right? We thought we were going to have to use it. We borrowed it and we thought we were going to have to use it. Didn't end up using it. So what we can do with it now is we're not going to go out and, you know, have a company party or anything like that. It's restricted and it says we can only use it to help now pay for the debt for the building that was built or the capital project that was that was created okay so we're going to transfer this out and it's going to be really transferred out to like uh, the debt service fund is really where it's going to go okay so we're transferring it out and uh, reducing cash right so there's our transfer there and this here is the closing uh, we're, we're reducing our transfer out uh, amount and at the same time that we just created here right and we're also reducing our uh, restricted so now the capital projects fund is truly zeroed no balance in anything cash is gone any the cash is the only asset that we had on hand for this fund that we got from our bond and our other other financing and our uh, the fund balance is zero now okay so the uh, governmental activities, now what we need to do with that to close it out, it, it really is a reclassification entry. Okay, so we're taking all of our work in process, accumulated work in process for this, for this uh, capital project, and we're reclassifying it to, this is our capital uh, asset, which is a building, right? The fire uh, station building. Okay, so this is the building, and this is the amount that we are now going to depreciate going forward. So that's kind of the that's kind of the whole life cycle of the capital projects fund. We didn't really touch too much into debt service and all that. We'll cover that in another uh, chapter as we get to it. Kind of the next step in paying off all this stuff now that we've borrowed. Okay. So when we issue bonds, um, and this is something, we won't get into this too much, but sometimes when we issue bonds like we did to pay for this fire station, uh, we may need to issue them at a premium or a discount, depending on uh, the interest rates in the market. So uh, so there may be a, a premium or a discount. We're not going to get into that too much, but um, we, we can talk maybe a little bit more about it in class if you want to. Okay. Uh, we, we also uh, may hold out some per, some payment. So this is retained percentages. So we may hold a certain percentage of the contractor's uh, con, uh, contracted amount, right, that we contracted with them on, uh, that we agreed to. And, and we will have to hold it as a payable. Okay. Until whatever... The, what, whatever is in the contract is satisfied. So that's one issue that we may have to deal with as well at the kind of the towards the end of as we're wrapping up our capital projects.
timing is really important when it comes to all of this stuff that goes into building capital projects and issuing bonds, right? So the bonds pay for a lot of this stuff. For example, on campus here at TVCC, the new science building, half of that building was paid for with bond money, okay? So so really that's a you know that's a lot of money so the building was six million dollars right and so about three million of it was bond financing well we want to we need to do the bond a lot of times those bonds too are reimbursable bonds right so you have to actually spend the money first and then the the government will give you the money that you already that you already spent and so in order to kind of bridge the gap financially a lot of times um governments will take out a bond anticipation note, right? So the bonds are issued, are being issued. It's a 100% sure thing. And so some financer is gonna come in, like a bank or something, and they're gonna say, hey, you know what? We know you're gonna get the money from the bond. We you know we know you need the cash now. So we'll take a, a little risk. It's, it's probably not a huge amount of risk. And we'll come in and we'll give you that the money, minus a little fee and a little percentage on interest. And so you can have your money to build your building. And then when the bond actually gets paid out or you get the funds from reimbursement, you pay us back. So that's kind of a, you know, cash. It helps things move along the and not take forever to build these capital projects. When you do have interest expenses, though, for all this stuff, right, whether it's a bond anticipation note or like we had in our example, the interest on that uh, at first initial little uh, note that we took out from the bank to get things started. Uh, for the most part, it needs to end up in the general fund. Uh, unless it's some type of auxiliary like business type activity. Like so if we borrow some money to build a new bookstore, for example, that's more business like. And so all the all of those expenses can go straight in and be capitalized with the new bookstore uh, building, for example. Uh, but but any other example is it's going to end up in the general fund and in the legislative body, the the school board or the the city council, whoever's in in charge of the government needs to make sure this uh, expenditure is allowed and budgeted for. Okay. So so in the end, uh, as we're financing these things, right? So if the if the capital projects fund meets the definition of a major fund, right, which is uh, ten percent, right, or uh, we can go back to our our major fund classifications. It depends on how big everything else is in our government. Then we need to report it in a separate column. Otherwise, it's included in with all of the other non-major funds. It's put together with all of them. So it depends on how big it is in relationship to the entire government budget um, and if we need to include it as a separate fund or not. In the government-wide side, uh, it's going to be part of the government-wide activities column, right, in the government-wide statement. So uh, we're going to be talking more about, uh, in our next uh, chapter, we're going to talk about some debt service funds and things that we're going to be doing there. And uh, then we'll, in the end, for our last chapter, so we got a couple chapters left here, um, things are moving right along, um, is we're also going to talk about uh, analysis, because that's going to be important for you guys when you do your term projects. So we, we, we're we starting to understand kind of what some of the funds are and what they're used for, and now we need to step in and put on our thinking hats and say, okay, how can we analyze uh, the operations and how the funds are being used and the and is the if the uh, government uh, body is is um, growing if they're progressing if they're doing what they they're fulfilling their mission those type of things so we'll get back at that and hopefully uh, we will see you in class and we'll keep going on with our uh, in-class activities and have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.